Good afternoon, everybody. I want to first of all, uh, if you want to take some seats, that, that would be wonderful. But I want to first of all welcome you to City Hall here in the City of Champions, the City of Brockton, Massachusetts. I am uh, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City. Um, I'm a Brocktonian. I'm the biggest cheerleader you ever met, uh, meet relative to Brockton. But um, I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito um, and, of course, Governor Charlie Baker. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor fostered a wonderful working relationship with our late mayor, Bill Carpenter, and it's continued throughout. So I want to thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I want to thank both you and the Undersecretary. This is an exciting day, not just for the city of Brockton, but the other municipalities that are here today as well. Uh, I do want to first of all recognize Senator Mike Brady, Representative Jerry Cassidy, Representative Michelle Dubois for being here. I want to welcome and thank uh, City Councilor Susan DeCastro, City Councilor Jack Lally, City Councilor Jeff Thompson, City Councilor at Large Rita Mendez, City Councilor Shirley Azak for joining us. And I know Representative Claire Cronin, Lita Cronin was, was tied up today, but she uh, thanks uh, the administration, of course. Again, I am just so thankful, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, being here today, and Under Secretary Ashley Stolber, um, who has been here many, 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 many times uh, throughout my term as mayor. Uh, during the height of COVID, um, Charlie Baker and Karen Polito have stepped up, and that's a fact. To the extent just two Fridays ago, Lieutenant Governor and Governor came back to Brockton, and the three of us got our booster shots. So before we talk about this, I'm going to give another shameless plug. I said it that day, I'm going to say it again. In the holiday season, the best gift that you can give yourself right now and your loved ones is to get vaccinated. Simple as that. <laughs> if you are eligible for the booster, please, please, please get the booster shot. And again, it will save lives. It's a proven fact. So that was my, uh, my plug today. But I'm just so excited. Uh, I want to thank all the representatives from the 16 municipalities who are here today as well visiting us. And they are recipients of the pre-development grant. And, uh, we are just so excited because Lieutenant Governor Polito has come here, uh, Secretary Keneally has come here, the Under Secretary has come here, and we always welcome them with open arms, but especially when they come with money. So we want to thank you, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor. We are just so excited. The City of Champions today will be awarded $140,000. We've been awarded so much in the past, and thank you. The, the basis really for these MassWorks grants are, are to create game-changing endeavors here in the city of Brockton. If you're a, a new visitor to the city, what you're seeing downtown right now, it's a revitalization and it's, it's real. And transit-oriented, the three stops in Brockton is a reason for that. We have 750 housing units in the queue right now. The first, and I'm gonna say this again, the first black-owned brewery in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is gonna be right across the street here. A lot of us uh, either worked with or served or worked for Bill Carpenter, Mayor Carpenter, and um, we have a parking garage, thankfully, uh, named after him. It was the right thing to do, but we were able to leverage that through, again, these grant fundings. And we, it's state of the art. Uh, there's only one other in the entire world, and it's in Sydney, Australia, with the technology we use here in the City of Champions. And again, as the, as the son of a history teacher, I always talk about history. So all of you today are getting a little gift bag of candy, and it's the Washburn Candy Company here in Brockton. It is the oldest, oldest serving family-owned candy in the United States. It outbeats Hershey. So enjoy that candy during the holiday season, please. Right across the street, Thomas Edison was here. He was here for two years. First electrified fire station, first electrified movie theater, first electrified street light here in the city of Champions. So again, it's historic. And before you leave, a little fact. Look at that picture, that painting. Look at the man on the horse with the rifle. And if you can explain to me why that rifle moves wherever you are and walking around, I'll give you some more candy, because I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. It will follow you. And uh, when the governor was here with the first lady, he's like, yeah, you're right, it does, Mayor. So again, I please, I ask you to do that. But what we're going to use this money for, money for is that undisputed heavyweight champ, uh, middleweight champ of the world, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, was from here, from the city of Brockton. And thanks to our friends in the legislature, and Jerry Cassidy was the lead on this, we're putting a statue up on uh, Petronelli Way, 28 Petronelli Way. Franklin Street abuts this. It's going to be a pedestrian. It's really ripe for development. So the money we're getting today is, is to use uh, is research and development relative to Franklin and how we can really get that to where we're going to put it there. And it's going in the right direction. And I say this and I mean this. If Brockton was a stock, everybody here should buy it. 
return on investment is real, and it's, it's real because of the administration, because of Karen and Charlie and their dedication, not just to the city of Brockton, the 351 communities that make up the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So with that being said, uh, we will be doing a full depth reconstruction of Franklin Street, and uh, we have so much to be thankful for. So I want to welcome you, Lieutenant Governor, and I'm going to ask you to come to the podium, and thank you for always being a friend of the City of Champions. That's great. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you very much, everyone. It's great to see you. It's great to be at City Hall again in person uh, with, with you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and the delegation, Senator Brady, Rep. Cassidy, Rep. Dubois. And I did hear from uh, Leader Cronin earlier today, uh, who appreciates all the good work that everyone is doing and obviously had a lot to do with the success of this grant and her continued advocacy for all things Brockton certainly makes a difference. I want to just acknowledge behind these wonderful boards that you have here is your, your vaccine goal. You're clearly near 70% fully vaccinated here in the City of Champions. Thank you. Thanks to everyone at the Shaw Center for continuing to open your doors to us. From testing to vaccines to vaccines to vaccines to boosters to boosters, you're just really getting the job done. I want to thank you all here at City Hall. I want to thank the delegation. I want to thank all the community leaders here for working so hard over the last 22 months to keep the people of this city safe and to make sure they have a healthy holiday and they turn into the new year prepared for where we're at, but also for a safer, happier, uh, year ahead and uh, uh, took a ton of hard work. So I'm just so grateful, the governor and I, for what you've been able to do with us. And at the same time, you haven't missed a beat on your economic development. And, and that's huge too. Uh, there's something about being mayor here that requires the utmost of enthusiasm and op optimism and energy. I clearly knew that with former mayor Bill Carpenter a wonderful man, loved the city so much, so proud. Every time I'd come, he'd highlight and spotlight something special going on. And it's great to see that momentum continue and see the vision that you all laid out for the city coming to fruition, becoming real right here before your eyes. And it's taken leadership, it's taken planning, but it's taken you know the, the shoulder behind the effort to see it through. And we couldn't be prouder of your accomplishments and proud to continue to work with you to see all of this come to be. Uh, I also want to acknowledge this was one of the first stops with, with Mayor Carpenter through this beautiful room. These are treasures that you are stewards of. Uh, the, the painting here is, is clearly unique and part of your history, and it's just a beautiful room to be in. So for those who are visiting from other places in the Commonwealth, enjoy uh, this particular room in this city hall. I know how proud the building department and all the custodians who uh, work hard to keep this place uh, looking the way it does. Uh, we acknowledge all of your efforts as well. Uh, let me just say a couple things uh, before turning it over to Ashley. Oh, there. Yeah. I enjoyed getting the, the rundown here. I just want to repeat what the mayor said. You have 750 units of housing in production. In a year to two, you'll have 1,000 units of new housing here in the downtown Main Street area of Brockton. That's game changing. That's transformational because homes for people 24-7 living here next to the commuter rail, and it will require that they have more breweries and entertainment and shops and restaurants and things to do. You created the vibe right, that's going to keep tra attracting investors, but also attracting people to want to live here. So congratulations. You have to believe in yourself. You are your own champions. And then clearly, you're attracting other champions, private sector investors, it's more state dollars to see all this happen. Uh, I love the new street being called the marvelous Marvin Hagler Way. Way. Yeah. That's awesome. So keep it up. It's, it's truly an inspiration to all of us to see your success. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity for us to also acknowledge the partnership that exists between state and local government all throughout our Commonwealth. And that when you as a partnership, it's two ways, right? We've done a lot of listening over the past couple of years 
to figure out how we in state government can better serve our municipalities. Yes, we have terrific partners in the legislature programming a, an economic development bill that contains the funding for these programs. Then we as an administration have to figure out how to get those dollars into the right hands to see stuff like this happen. So what we did was really important. Listen to you and we consolidated 10 to 12 economic development programs, including MassWorks, which is the biggest economic infrastructure program, and we put them into one-stop shopping for you. So the idea of having to figure out when a grant is going to come open, how to apply for it, and not know if you're even going to get the grant, and put all that time and energy into it, is in the rear view. We now have a one-stop application process to access all of the economic development tools so that you can keep your projects moving forward. So it all started again yesterday. The second one-stop round of grants started with the expressions of interest that are open for you and your development teams. <laughs> to literally outline on a one-pager your top five projects and then you submit it to Ashley Stolber and the economic development team at the state level and we serve as your consultants for free to be able to give you a sense of which projects are ready, which projects need a little bit more design and permitting work before you can get the construction dollars. And literally, I always say to the development team, make sure these municipalities don't leave empty handed. There's got to be some grant in this mix that you can give them that they will be able to start a project and continue others moving forward. So that's what today's announcement is all about. It's about one of those programs within the one-stop application process called a pre-development grant opportunity. It's part of the MassWorks program, but not every project is ready for construction dollars. So this allows for 16 communities, including Brockton, to do the design permitting and the getting the project ready stuff so that then in the next round you'll be ready and have more success because your application will be stronger for those construction dollars which will then attract the private investors to see more projects like this become real. So that's what this is all about and that's like us getting smarter and better at this. So I'm hoping that the legislators are taking notes so that the next administration will continue uh, these good practices and processes that are really efficient and really smart way of getting these dollars into the right hands. And with all of the ARPA dollars that you just programmed through the legislature and the governor just signed off on, we can just turbocharge these programs with ARPA dollars, the federal dollars, to see even more economic development happen all throughout the Commonwealth. We are not just going to recover from this pandemic, we're going to rebound and this state will be humming with more economic opportunity from one end of the state to the other. <laughs> so the $3.7 in funding, uh, part of the, the 56 MassWorks grants, 16 pre-development grants. Brockton's getting $226,000 in that grant, as the mayor just outlined, to do the work up on Franklin Street with the new street and everything that's going to come with that. Uh, it will help with further revitalization and produce, uh, you are expecting to produce approximately 1,500 new units of housing in downtown. We talked about that. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that the one stop allowed for several other grants to come your way in addition to this pre-development grant. So you didn't just get one, you got four. <laughs> $150,000 for site readiness, uh, $250,000 in housing choice because Brockton was one of the early uh, adopters of the zoning reforms needed to easy, more easily permit all kinds of housing, especially in your downtown. So $250,000 for that and $140,000 in a underutilized uh, properties grant which will be used with the Brockton Redevelopment Authority to stabilize and weatherize an historic structure on federal, uh, Frederick Douglass Avenue to make it attractive and financially feasible for private development. Thank you. Huge, that's great. So I'm glad that we could be here to spotlight how Brockton's making it all happen and you certainly serve as an example and an inspiration to other gateway cities that are trying hard to do this kind of thing 
And the other piece that Ashley Stobel will talk about, it's not just about gateway cities. We're also investing more dollars in rural communities and suburban communities so that every community has a downtown, a main street, or a place where there can be more housing and more economic opportunity and a more, more, more vibrancy so that the people who live there feel like there's something really special and good happening in their community, just like you're seeing here in this great city. And again, yesterday started this process again. So get ready, uh, get your applications in, the expressions of interest in, and we can't wait to, to be back here again uh, to celebrate your further success. Congratulations to you. We'll take some pictures after, but let me just turn this over to Ashley Stoba at this time. And uh, thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you for my new mask. I'm so excited to wear this. Um, so on behalf of the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, congratulations. We're so excited to be back here in Brockton. The Secretary and I were last here. Um, I did not come here for my booster, but I did get my booster. Um, but we were here for a small business tour back in September, where we went down to Main Street and we heard from small business owners who persevered, who pivoted during the, pa during the pandemic. Thank you for staying open. Please continue your hard work. Um, but we're really happy to be back here to celebrate your awesome success in the community One Stop for Growth. So as Lieutenant Governor mentioned, we love the One Stop. We are so proud of the One Stop. Um, in years past, cities and, and private developers would have to come in on all different timelines and all different grant program applications. Not anymore. So we have one application that's super streamlined. Hopefully it's super easy. We did make a few tweaks for the next round to make it more easier, um, but we're really excited about the One Stop. The results this year were unbelievable. We received 360 applications from 177 communities and requested over $300 million worth of funds. Um, we're happy to report that 196 applications will be funded across 122 communities all across the state for a total funding award amount of $88.7 million. Yay. And also, as Lieutenant Governor mentioned, it was really, really important to us that we spread these fund out, funds out equally and equitably. And it was the coolest thing. So we had nine applications, nine grant programs. We had one map. And we could say, you know, we want to be sure that we get from all the way from the Berkshires to the Cape and everywhere in between. And we really did just that. So almost one third of the projects were funding rural and small towns. A third were located in a gateway city. And almost half were located in a housing choice community. So this process is amazing. We are so excited about it. I can't believe we're already launching it again. Um, but we're very excited for this next round. And we can't wait to see what you guys are up to next year. So we're celebrating a bunch of things here today. You are receiving four awards from the One Stop this year. The Site Readiness Program, that's another program that we love because we love to invest early. We want to be partners with you from the very beginning. And we help municipalities, private sector businesses, nonprofits to advance prime sites for these large scale industrial commercial use projects. Um, so you'll be getting $150,000 for that to determine the viability of pursuing site acquisitions in the Trout Book Redevelopment Authority area. Um, you're also a housing choice community. So much have been, has been said about the work that you're doing to help us fight the housing crisis. So because of that designation, you are eligible for more state grants. So thank you for being a housing choice community and you're receiving $250,000 for um, the Thatcher Street Smart Growth Overlay District. And then finally, the underutilized property program. This was the first year that we had this program and it was so competitive. So you should be so proud of yourselves for having an award in this program. Um, we received almost $100 million worth of requests for this program alone and only had $8 million worth of funding. So you should be really proud of yourselves for receiving an award um, for this. So really, we are also here to celebrate the 16 awardees who are receiving MassWorks pre-development grants. I know there are a few of you here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll read through the entire list. And if there is a representative here from that community, please come up. And I'll give you your award. And we can take a picture. So we have Acton is receiving $90,000 for a complete street design for Great Road Corridor. Woohoo! Athol is receiving $131,000 to design and engineer um, a hotel and conference center in the North Quabbin Business Park. Yeah. Dartmouth, Lieutenant Governor, I know you were there this morning. They are receiving a $110,000 grant to support the development of a future-friendly 40B site of the 288 units. Yeah. 
Uh, Dudley is receiving a $179,000 grant for design and sewer, to design sewer and, sewer and streetscape improvements in the Towns Mill Conversion Overlay District. <laughs> Great Barrington is receiving a $69,000 grant for their Affordable Housing Trust to support development for a Habitat for Humanity uh, home. Haverhill is receiving $750,000 to redevelop a municipally owned parcel in downtown to support new housing and commercial developments. <laughs> Holden is receiving $220,000 for the design and future reuse of a former DPW property site. <laughs> Paul, I know you are here. You're receiving a $272,000 grant for the final design and transportation improvements in downtown Hull and the Nantasket Beach area. Congratulations to Ho. I know you've worked very hard on that area. Uh, Medway is receiving $20,000 for Main Street sidewalk improvements. <laughs> North Reading is receiving $100,000 to design a wastewater collection system allowing new development that can only be permitted if sewer is available. <laughs> Revere is receiving $750,000 to support the development at the Riverfront District, which is a 20-acre mixed-use site. Salem is receiving $45,000 to support design documents for pedestrian and cyclist access for the North Street Connector. <laughs> Seekonk is receiving $97,000 to assess wastewater alternatives for the former Attleboro Dye Work site. <laughs> Springfield is receiving $400,000 to improve overall mobility around a project site on Route 20. And finally, Weymouth, the Southfield Redevelopment Authority, is receiving $270,000 for a Union Point floodplain mapping. So congratulations to all of the awardees. Congratulations to Brockton. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. We know that keeping a community strong is all because of the hard work here at the city, the state level, community leaders, volunteers, private developers, really everyone. It takes a village, right? Um, but we really are so grateful for our partners in the state legislature. You have a great delegation here. Um, so with that, I will introduce Senator Brady to make a few remarks. Thank you very much. And if I can have my colleagues, State Representative Cassidy and Representative Dubois, to come up as well, because we work as a team in the State House and the Commonwealth. And I know Rep. Uh, Claire Cronin, our Majority Leader, does have another commitment because she would have been here. But uh, I'm going to let them speak after myself. But I am so grateful to you, Lieutenant Governor Polito, and the Governor and the Administration for all the help you've given us in the City of Champions. You've been there, as the Mayor mentioned, former Mayor Bill Carpenter, Mayor Sullivan. We've worked diligently as a team, and there's been so much investment in our downtown corridor. And the need for housing is, is so important. I get calls every day for people looking for apartments or proper housing, and this is workforce development housing. So a teacher starting out or a nurse that cannot afford the prices the, of the rents that have gone through the roof, not only in Brockton, all over the Commonwealth, uh, this will help get them into a, a unit and, and people getting back into the workforce. And I want to thank the Old County Planning Council. We, you talked about the first minority-owned business. There's a delegation of helping minority-owned businesses and the investments in downtown is going to be tremendous because housing and more people living in the downtown area is going to help the business community as well. So they'll go to the restaurants and eat out and so forth. And it's a win-win across, across the board. And I know a lot of businesses suffered, and thank God for some of the grants that helped them out in last year with the heat of the COVID. And I, I thank you, Mayor, because people have to get vaccinated. It, it's a no-brainer. And um, I'm glad that all the work on Neighborhood Health Center and all the health care facilities have worked together to get people vaccinated up at the Shaw Center and in the other facilities that have been available. So I'm just here to be part of the team. We work together. I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues in the state house. But I want to thank you, Lieutenant Governor and the Governor and the administration, because you've been here day in and day out to support us in the City of Champs. So God bless you in your next endeavor. And thank you all for your support. And thank you to all our colleagues and, and people in City Hall and our workers and our city councils and the rest of the delegation because 
No one does alone. We work as a team in the city of Brockton. That's what makes us the city of champions. So thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. I just want to thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor Polito, for your, you know, your your support of Brockton and um, through Bill Carpenter and now Bob Sullivan supporting our ideas here. I'm a firm believer in affordable housing and we really need so much of it in Massachusetts and in Brockton. So thank you again. We are grateful. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant Governor. It's, it's uh, unbelievable all, all the things that we've accomplished over the five and a half years. When I first uh, got sworn in, you were the one who swore me in. And uh, I, I won't keep uh, say too long because you have to keep uh, Speaker Mariano uh, right, yeah, right on yeah. schedule. You don't want to be late for him. But I just want to thank you and Merry Christmas. So again, before we conclude, I do want to thank Chris Cooney from the Chamber for being here, Mary Walden from OCPC, and all of you for being here. Uh, I want to wish all of you a, a happy holiday, but more importantly, a healthy, and I underline that, I circle it, I highlight it, a healthy new year. And one last thing, if I could just uh, share this, because it's this a great story. Recently, myself and Troy Clarks and the CFO were at, in Boston at 125 High Street. In essence, we just refinanced our, our unfunded pension liability, our OPEB liability, $300 million. And so for 12 hours, we were interviewed, 12 hours interviewed. And the last interview was from Eaton Vance. And the woman was uh, vice president of the whole company. And she grilled me with questions. And at the end, she said to me, Mr. Mayor, how long did it take you to get in here today, 125 High Street? I said, traffic was a bear. On the expressway, it took me two hours. How about yourself? She said, an hour and 45. I said, where do you live? She said, Brockton. Senior Vice President at Eaton Vance, she could be Dover, Sherburn, she could be anywhere in the Commonwealth, and she lives in Brockton on East Ashland Street. And I said, do you mind me asking wh why you're in Brockton? I mean, I love it, right? I'm, I'm Brockton. You cut me right now, I'm going to bleed red and black. Brockton, Brockton, Brockton. And she said two things, the diversity of the people and the education. Speaks volumes right there. Speaks volumes. So. At the end of that story, we went out and we had a two-day sale and we had to close it on day one because 1.3 billion with a B wanted to invest in the City of Champions. So this is because of the work of the administration, the delegation, the City Council, the school committee. We're all in this together. We're better together. So again, Merry Christmas, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much, Under Secretary. Please thank the Governor. I will see you in Worcester on the 22nd. Be well, everybody. God bless.